Extra Overtime, sponsored by Michael's Italian Feast. Welcome back to Sports Extra Overtime. Now it's time to take a deep dive into tonight's big games. We welcome to our studio John Camosa, who just got back his uh, clutch sports media team called the Metamora Peoria High matchup. It wasn't much of a game because only a quarter and a half was played. The game was marred by a fight in the stands, which winds up suspending the game, postponing the game, and now it's a forfeit that Metamora does not want to come back and, and replay the rest of the game. What did you see? You were there. Yeah, so I mean, a really exciting uh, first quarter, second quarter. I mean, back and forth, both teams, high-powered offense, really good defense. Seen a couple early touchdowns from Malachi Washington. But about eight minute mark in the second quarter, Cody Roskins and I, who work for Clutch Sports Media, we're calling the game, getting a little distracted. We're used to tuning in, you know, into the game. But right behind us, a mass fight just starts to break out. Hear a lot of banging noises. People start just evacuating the stadium. Metamora's players hop the fence, and they kind of took uh, cover over by the bleachers. So really not sure what all happened, but everything happened directly behind us. Obviously, there was a heavy police presence to try to calm everybody down. Again, they've decided not to finish that game. It's a forfeit win for. Peoria High, Metamora has opted not to finish the game. So let's talk about what we did see on the field in a brief, you know, a bit like we said, about a quarter and a half. These two teams hadn't played one another at Peoria Stadium in 31 years. It's kind of a shame that we're talking about, you know, a fight. Yeah, it's typically a game you'd see, you know, in a playoff, but really exciting first half. Peoria High gets on the board. Tino just with a really nice touchdown to Ricky Hearn. And then from there, Malachi Washington just really broke loose. He had an 85 yard touchdown run to put Peoria High up 14 0. And then Caden Hartnett, nice uh, QB keeper from the three yard line to cut it to 14 8. And then once again, Malachi Washington, 45 yard run to put Peoria High back up 20 8. Caden Hartnett, one more touchdown, but then once again, uh, geist over to Ricky Hearn. And then Peoria High, eventually that game just kind of got halted. Well, again, let's hope that uh, this is just kind of a blip on the screen and this doesn't lead to anything. But again, Peoria High wins the game in a forfeit over Metamora as the Redbirds have opted not to return and, and finish that game. Uh, Metamora had a, had a nice lead anyway. But anyway, thanks, John. We're glad that you're safe Definitely. and that uh, you'll be back here next week to contribute to our show. You can follow John on Twitter at JCOM91. Now let's head it back over to uh, Patrick Cunningham with a look at a big Heart of Illinois conference game in week one. Thank you, Kurt. Joining us now is Steve Cease from our Twin Cities newsroom. Steve is from Cities 92.9 Radio. You can follow him on Twitter at Prof Cease for score updates. Steve was in Mackinac for a great small school matchup between Ridgeview, Lexington and DMACC. How'd the game go, Steve? Well, you have to excuse my voice. I lost it a little bit in Mackinac, but that wasn't the only thing that got lost in Mackinac. We lost the football tonight. Eight combined turnovers between these two teams tonight, Patrick. And, uh, you know, the Mustangs, even though they were 21-8 to 8 winners in this one, uh, they had three of their own. Uh, senior quarterback Alec Thomas threw two picks. And the big offensive weapon from last year, Caden Farrell, fumbled the ball in the red zone. So the Mustangs weren't without their own problems tonight. But DMAC turned the ball over five times on offense tonight. Each of their first three drives ended in, an, in, ended in a turnover. And I don't even know if you can call the first drive a drive. It was uh, a fumble on the opening kickoff of the game. Certainly not how you'd like to start a season. And even more concerning and, and sort of on the bad end of the stick for the Chiefs, two of those turnovers happened in the red zone. When you lose a game by two scores, you got to look back at those two plays and say, they were both opportunities to potentially put the ball in the end zone. So, Steve, a lot of mistakes early, very much a week one game between both two teams who have very high aspirations trying to make postseason runs. How do you think both coaches are going to try and adjust as they try and bounce back from kind of a rough game? Well, certainly there were some offensive mistakes tonight. I don't want to make it seem like it, was, it wasn't sloppy play. There was some sloppy play at times. Uh, we did see some penalties from both teams uh, and uh, a couple that uh, were certainly um, mistakes that, that could have been avoided. Uh, however, I don't want to say that everything was just uh, poor execution on the offense. Both of these two defenses played very well tonight. And I, and I think we're seeing two playoff defenses from last year fired up to start this season. The four interceptions in this game between the two teams, every single one of them happened on third and long or fourth and long. And it was the defense that got them in that position to make those turnovers in the first place. So these two coaches, 
are going to try and fix what's wrong on offense, but they got to be pretty happy with their defensive uh, effort here tonight. And real quick, Steve, their schedule's not getting easier. They both have to play Tri-Valley, both playing heavy Heart of Illinois schedules up front. What do you think the coaches will do to kind of prepare their teams for that? Oh, I don't know. I mean, Tri-Valley, <laughs> they're going to have their hands full. Another big win for the Vikings tonight. And uh, next week, DMAC hosts Tri-Valley. So they get two uh, playoff semifinalists at home to start the season. And then week three, Ridgeview Lexington has to go into Downs and play Tri-Valley there. So a very front-loaded Heart of Illinois schedule this year. And uh, certainly all three of these teams are teams that a lot of folks are looking at and saying, they're probably playoff teams at the end, but one of them potentially, DMAC, could be 0-2 after next week. All righty. Thank you, Steve, for your analysis. Look forward to having with you uh, with us all season long.